What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. I uh, got to review this one tonight. Obviously, there was a lot of news going in and out of the show, so let's get right into it. But before we actually start off this whole review, make sure you all go check out the Clash of the Castle review, which is uploaded online right now. It's been a very busy weekend of wrestling, but hey, I'm back, and um, yeah, it's, obviously, it's more news coming out of tonight's show, too. So let's get right off the bat to it. Starting off in Corpus Christi, Texas, we get the return uh, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is back. Uh, Seth Rollins said it feels good to be back. There was a welcome back chant. Um, you know, everybody starts singing his song. He says, I know you all miss me, and I thank everyone here tonight, but I'm only back for one reason. And, you know, he talks about being one of the greatest of all time, but he wants to be the greatest of all time, and he wants his world heavyweight title back. Um, he talked about the money in the bank briefcases above, and yes, he knows that the Money in the Bank is in a few weeks away. And before he could say anything, Damian Priest came out welcoming um, welcoming uh, Seth Rollins back. He did limp a little. Uh, everybody talked about his ankle over the weekend and how he almost lost his leg. Uh, but Priest says, I'm happy that you're back. And um, listen, we both cashed in Money in the Bank before. Seth went on to say that too. We both come from groups. You know, we both cashed in at WrestleMania and won our world titles. Uh, but at some point, you know, Seth said he grew a set, and the only way to be the greatest of all time, you have to do it on your own. Priest said, yeah, I get that. You got to stand on your own everything. So you know what? At Money in the Bank, I do want to face you, um, uh, you know, for the world title, uh, the big match and everything. So yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, no judgment day involved and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, you, you, I accept the challenge. So yeah, Money in the Bank, it is going to be Seth Rollins. Um, Seth Rollins and uh, Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight title on the line. Um, like I said, I didn't really expect to see Seth Rollins back so soon. It's only been like, what, a couple months really? Uh, since April? So, yeah, I didn't think he'd be back so fast. But, yeah, he will be facing uh, Damian Priest for the World title at Money in the Bank. So, a big return we got tonight. Um, I, I will say, you know, going into this, I did talk to a few people earlier in the night about about Seth versus Priest could, um, when you really think about it, could Seth win the world title back there and then face Gunther at SummerSlam? Maybe. I'm not sure. I feel like it'll be some type of screwy finish between Seth Rollins and, um, Damian Priest for the world title of Money in the Bank. I wouldn't be surprised. Hell, maybe a cash-in for all I know. But, um, they did start off hot, uh, on this show. Like I said, Seth Rollins was a really good surprise. Like I said, I didn't expect to see him back so soon. So, um, yeah, right off the bat, he's already going for the world title. So, um, we'll see what goes on from there. Uh, Adam Pierce was in the back on the phone. Chad Gable basically wanting another rematch uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. But Pierce said, uh, listen, you've had multiple title shots. you got to get in the back of the line, okay? And Gable says, you know, I want someone to face tonight. And Priest says, I got the perfect guy uh, for you tonight, um, which we'll find out later on. But as we move on, we end up uh, knowing that Chad Gable was going one-on-one -on -one with Braun Strowman. Uh, so, yeah, he had to fight a bit of a giant right here to get through. Um, you know, obviously, Otis and them out there somewhat kind of get involved. Um, Gable barking orders at the rest of the Alpha Academy, which they end up trying to uh, walk away. Strowman ended up winning, doing a power slam onto uh, Chad Gable, winning. Uh, Gable basically ordered everybody to get in the ring there. He's grabbing Tozawa by the ear. Uh, Maxine tried to get involved, but, um, Gable ended up taking the, um, what, the, the crutch and throwing it, uh, outside of the ring then. Otis basically helped her out of the ring. Gable ended up slapping Tozawa then. Otis had saw what happened, and then Otis ended up pushing, uh, Gable to the ground, ripping off, uh, his shirt and everything as, um, Gable didn't know what to do. Otis was fired up. Crowd went nuts for Otis pushing down Gable. Uh, Otis and everybody left the ring as they chanted, you suck at Gable then, as Gable um, just kind of stood there wondering what was going on. I still think, as I said in the class review, I think the Creed brothers and um, Ivy Nile, basically Diamond Mine will end up joining Gable. I still see that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen, so we'll see what goes on from there. Um, right after that, Damian Priest uh, was in the back with the rest of the Judgment Day, talking about what's going on with Seth Rollins talking about the whole key card thing with um you know balor why'd you take the key card snuck off with it he said he tried to protect dom priest basically you know wanted to question him and everything so um 
you know, he talked about money in the bank. He said, listen, you need to focus on your match tonight and getting the money in the bank match, okay? So that's what you need to do. Um, Balor basically said, you know, you can trust me. Dominic was looking for his cow vest, which um, Carlito says, you know, maybe Liv, you met, left in Liv's hotel room. Priest didn't really find it funny and told Carlito, you need to focus on your match tonight. So um, you need to go get ready. Um, Priest asked Balor, you spoken to Ripley lately? Balor said no. Uh, right after that was a qualifying match uh, to see who's going to get the money in the bank. Um, Io Shirai, Kiana James, and Zelina Vega. Um, the match was okay. It ended up with Liv Morgan coming out distracting um, Zelina Vega, which ended up with Io hitting her moonsault onto Kiana James for the win. So Io moves on to money in the bank. Obviously, it's going to be Zelina Vega versus Liv Morgan, which I guess they finally found a challenger for Liv Morgan. For the women's title, I don't really got to care about seeing this match. So, as my friend Steven would say, riveting stuff. Uh, but, no, I don't really kind of care uh, to see Liv Morgan versus Alina Vega. I'm like, this is the first challenger they got for uh, Liv Morgan. So, uh, yeah, that's a wolf for me. And, obviously, that's going to play on the later in the show. Uh, but, yeah, EO moves on. Uh, right after that, Sami Zayn came out. Sami Zayn talked about how he's still Intercontinental Champion. And he wonder who his next challenger is going to be. And um, how he beat Gable, but it's time to move on from that. And he feels for the Alpha Academy. But now uh, he talked about, you know, how he didn't leave the bloodline and everything. And how Jey Uso is right now. But before he can go on and say anything else, Braun Breaker came out then. Obviously, Braun Breaker's been on a very destructive path lately. Just taking out everybody. But he says he... You know, he basically says he's next in line to face Sami Zayn for that Intercontinental title. You're next on my list. Sounds like Goldberg in a way. Uh, Sheamus came out then saying, what's the crack? I don't know what that means, but what's the crack? But he told Sami Zayn he's coming for the Intercontinental title. And Breaker says, you're in my way. I don't care about your sob story. I want the Intercontinental title. They both had a stare down then. Um, he said, I'll take out anybody that gets in his way. Sheamus basically saying, yeah, you're the new kid. So, uh, yeah, getting the back of the line. Sami Zayn basically went on and said, you know what? How about this? You guys can face each other um, tonight, and whoever wins will get a shot at the, um, at the uh, Intercontinental title. So, um... We'll go on and see what happens from there. Uh, right after that, uh, I know they talked to the new women's tag team champions, Alpha Fire and Isla Dawn, talking about how they won Scotland, but the, the work now begins. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark showed up, basically saying they want a um, rematch for those tag team titles. Dragon Lee went against uh, Carlito. Wow, DJ Z, when's the last time you've seen him out there with the LWO? I haven't seen him in a minute, but Rey Mysterio's out there with him too. Judgment Day was with Carlito. Um, Liv Morgan it came out with Dominic's uh, jacket on. Um, obviously Zelina Vega ended up running out attacking Liv Morgan. Then it was basically a brawl all over the place. It ended up with Carlito hitting the um backstabber on uh, Dragon Lee getting the win. So yeah, a lot of Judgment Day distraction finish right there for Carlito to get the win. Um, right after that, Chad Gable talking about what happened out there with Alpha Academy. Basically, Alpha Academy walked out on them saying, we're done, we're out of here, and they left. Gable says, you know what? I got to get in the money in the bank. That's what I got to do. Um, Drew McIntyre came out, was going to talk about having to clash the castle and CM Punk. CM Punk will be on SmackDown this Friday uh, in Chicago. Maybe going to that show, we'll see. But he is going to um, uh, you know, talk about his injury and what he did at the clash. Um, fans chant CM Punk after that. Drew basically just looked annoyed, and he says, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Screw this company. I quit. I'm out of here. Adam Pearce tried to stop him, uh, but <clears throat> stop him, but he just walked out. I feel like he will be on SmackDown this Friday and take out CM Punk, so we'll see what happens. Damage Control went against Kane Carter and Katana Chance. I did not really care and told it this crowd. I just know... Uh, K and Casey won, so yeah, moving on. Um, right after that, Braun Breaker went against Sheamus. Really great match. I gotta say, I enjoyed this a lot. Braun Breaker is just beast mode crazy, and just his speed is just impeccable, okay? But it ended up being a no contest or a DQ finish, given Ludwig Kaiser came out. Sheamus and Kaiser brawled, but uh, Braun speared him. 
and then Kai just started beating up Sheamus again, and then next thing you know, and I like how the camera shot was over the head with Braun and Kai, and someone running at the same speed, but given Braun, Braun's just massive speed, he basically ran all the way around and took out uh, Kaiser. Incredible spear, by the way. Yeah, I admit, when you want to debate spears, Braun's got one of the best right now, almost Goldberg level in a way. So, um, very good spears, I, I must say. Very good spears. Um, but definitely just beast mode took him, took out uh, Kaiser, and, you know, still it's going after Sammy won that Intercontinental title. So, you know, we're, we're going to see what happens there. But hell of a spear from uh, Breaker once again. Dominic ended up finding Liv Morgan. And basically, she told him, you want the vest? You got to take it off uh, off of me. Um, Dom was about to do it. Priest got involved. As, you know, he finally got the vest back and walked off. Priest told um, Liv to leave him alone. But um, he says, like, nah, I don't think um, I can do that. Because Priest said, like, Dominic doesn't want nothing to do with you. But Liv said, you know, uh, he wants everything to do with me. So we're going to see what goes on from there. Cross had some promo talking about Kofi and Woods. I don't care about this feud. Some say Woods looked annoyed by Kofi kind of interrupting his promo out there. So I guess they're trying to get the New Day to split up and maybe Woods will turn heel. I don't know. I don't really care. And given what I've seen the past few weeks, I don't know how many people care about this. Okay. I, I, I just don't even know where this is going anymore. But I guess... Woods may turn heel. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, right after that, Jay Uso was kind of promoing the crowd, talking about he's going to be in Money in the Bank. As it was a triple threat match, Jay Uso, Rey Mysterio, and Finn Balor uh, to see who's going to move on in the Money in the Bank. Uh, solid match. Obviously, Judgment Day got involved to beat up Rey Mysterio. Strowman did get involved and chase Judgment Day away because uh, Rey was just hitting 619s everywhere, I swear to God. But it ended up with um Balor... Um, what did he do? He hit the coup de gras onto uh, Rey Mysterio and pinned him. But Jay Uso ended up hitting his big Uso splash on the Balor and pinning him then. Taking him out uh, and moving on to Money in the Bank. But as he celebrated, the lights went out. And you kind of get Wyatt's... Basically Bray Wyatt's entrance with the lights going out. Like the Fiend and the door and stuff. Uh, there's a woman crawling. Which, I'm gonna cr which basically was Nikki Cross in a mask. With a lantern putting it there. Uh, just putting it on the ground. And they went to the camera in the back, and um, basically, it looked like a murder scene with the rambling rabbit with a hammer, which I'm assuming that's um, Eric Rowan right there. But you got all these random security guys on the ground, beat up. It looked like a murder scene and stuff, and, you know, all these other people involved in these masks. And, listen, I know the QR codes have been playing for multiple weeks on Raw and SmackDown now. I haven't really cared in general, but um, I know it's there. There was blood on the walls and stuff. They tried to make this look like a horror movie scene. And the only person you could really know who was there was Chad Gable with, like, blood on his head by the production crate, um, which they finally went to Uncle Howdy. He had his arms up, and the fans knew who was. Fans somewhat started to chant, holy shit. All these people came out with him, and he said, we're here. He blew out the lantern, and, you know, Bray Wyatt style. So this is the Wyatt Six, folks. I think this is what's going to be. I'll admit, it was a very good start. Uh, you know, going into this, listen, I still will somewhat kind of question it, given that Bray Wyatt is not here anymore. I'm assuming, I'm trying to give Bo Dallas a chance with this. I, I am. Do I think this will fail? Maybe. I don't know. But right now, I'll admit, I think it's a good start. So I can't, I'm not going to deny it and saying it was bad. It was very good. Like I said, it looked like a murder scene. That's what it looked like. It looked like a horror movie murder scene. I don't know how many people are going to like it, but in my case, I think this was good. It's a good start. So I've just questioned it when they were bringing this whole thing back with the QR code because I'm like, we're doing this thing again with Wyatt and them. I, it's, and like I said, it's just, I guess to me, given that Bray Wyatt is not here anymore, it's like, can you trust his... Well, I, you, he can trust his own brother, but... You know, is this going to work? So, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But right now, it's a good start. I'll admit that. So, let's give it a chance, I guess. If it sucks, it'll suck. If it turns out to be good, we'll see. But, um, like I said, I'm sure they got Bray Wyatt's ideas and whatever he left or however they're going to work this out. I don't know. 
But um, I'll admit, I was intrigued by it. It looked like a whole murder scene, but they may want to check on Chad Gable, though. So, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to see what happens. That I can say. I, I, w- I will say this one other thing, too, with Chad Gable. Um, it, it's kind of crazy with him. So we just saw this guy earlier in the night who's supposed to be this intriguing heel and very despic- despicable, beating up, you know, his own crew and abusing them and stuff and treating them like crap and was going for the Intercontinental title. Now this guy just got murdered on TV. So I think it's kind of funny in a way, like, where he was earlier in the night and now, you know... He's just cannon fodder for the Wyatt family or the Wyatt Six or whatever they call in this group. But yeah, it's supposed to be the Wyatt Six. So I think it's kind of kind of funny in a way that yeah, Chad Gable was this in, this somewhat intriguing big heel, which I don't even know he's gonna make it to his Money in the Bank qualifying match by next week. But um, yeah, it's quite it's kind of kind of crazy how that just happened. So crazy stuff there. But overall, I gotta say, Raw had a lot going on tonight. Seth Rollins coming back and now going for the world title at Money in the Bank. Uh, Braun Breaker just killing people with his spear. And now we have the debut of the Wyatt Six. So, I gotta say, a lot of newsworthy stuff coming out of Monday Night Raw tonight, I'll say. So, um, yeah. Very interesting stuff. And, uh, we're gonna see as we, uh, weeks in the Money in the Bank. And I'm sure SmackDown's gonna be big this Friday given uh, CM Punk is coming back. And, hey, NXT may have a lot of interesting stuff tomorrow in regards if anybody from TNA shows up. So, yeah, other than that, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Uh, Comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, like this video. Peace.